the Duke of Sussex has increasingly aligned himself with his late mother Diana ever since he left the royal family last year. He has also drawn comparisons between the struggles both the Princess of Wales and his own wife, Meghan Markle, endured during their time on the royal front line, and how they both felt abandoned by the palace. In his new Apple TV Plus docuseries, The Me You Can't See, Harry explained how his mother's tragic death in 1997 continues to affect him and clouded the time he spent in the royal fold. He told Oprah Winfrey that he still felt a sense of helplessness when remembering Diana and criticized his family for not helping him with his grief, as no one was talking about it after her death. He also scrutinized the level of media attention she had and discussed intense paparazzi pursuits when he was in the backseat as a child. Harry said, she was always unable to drive because of, the, tears. There was no protection, being a guy, but being too young to be able to help a woman, in this case, your mother, and that happened every single day. Every single day until the day she died. Then, in the second episode, he said, the clicking of cameras and flashes of cameras makes my blood boil, it makes me angry, it takes me back to what happened to my mum and what I experienced when I was a kid. However, the allegation that Diana was unprotected does not align with previous claims from the royal's former former protection officer, Ken Wharf, who looked after her for six years. Speaking in the 2017 NBC documentary, The Life and Death of Princess Diana, he recalled how he tried to dissuade Diana from renouncing all of her royal bodyguards after splitting from Prince Charles. The former Metropolitan Police officer claimed he told her, Whatever you want to do, you will always be Diana, Princess of Wales. The one thing that you shouldn't give up is your security. I strongly urge you not to do so. There's only one person that could, in my view, have insisted that she retain her security, and that would have been the Queen herself. However, Diana wanted her freedom and so disbanded most of her royal staff, just holding on to a cleaner, a cook, a dresser and her butler. She decided to use police protection but only when attending public events. Mr. Wharf then claimed, if the Queen had insisted that she retain that security then we wouldn't be having this discussion because Diana, in my view, would have been alive today. He left Diana's employment in 1993 and although she continued to use royal security offices up until her divorce, in the eight weeks leading up to her death she was protected by her boyfriend Dodie Fayard's security. Mr. Wharf also told the Daily Mail in 2016, the princess, like most of the royal family, accepted her police protection offices as a fact of life, though she had little idea of the training required to do the job effectively. Analyzing the fatal trip which led to Diana's death in a car crash, he claimed, the first mistake was to use a bodyguard hired by the Fayed family, Trevor Reese jones who was unable to say no to his employers. Harry also raised questions about his own level of security during his bombshell Oprah Winfrey interview back in March. However, he put the blame squarely on the firm for his lack of protection rather than wanting to dismiss his offices and pursue more freedom. He told Oprah, I never thought I would have my security removed, because I was born into this position. I inherited the risk, so that was a shock to me. That was what completely changed the whole plan. Meghan also said she wrote letters to his family requesting security for him, and pleading, please don't pull his security and announce to the world when he and we are most vulnerable. However, the palace reportedly said it was no longer possible to continue funding their protection. Reports at the time of the Sussexes' departure suggested that Prince Charles sent the couple a lump sum to cover their extensive security costs for their first year outside the royal fold, but this was not mentioned by Meghan or Harry in their interview.